Hello and welcome to this video tutorial in which we are going to look at adding a title screen to a game in Stencil. Now if you've been following through the last videos that I've made you'll have a working maze game um, which will involve the player collecting some objects, trying to avoid a bad guy and then trying to get out of the level. Um, the problem is the game just starts and it's not really a professional way to, to begin a game. You really need something there to tell the user that they're in the game to maybe provide some game information some instructions the controls and it just adds to the level of professionalism that your game has so when we last played it as soon as we launched the game we were straight into the level so i've added a title screen and we're going to have a look at the title screen in just a sec and then we're going to focus on how to actually make it in the video uh, it's, it's pretty simple to do uh, so we'll just wait for the game to finish compiling. It shouldn't take uh, more than a second or two now. And here we are. So here's my title page. And you can see what I've got. The name of the game, some text information, press space to start, and a little moving character on there that I just added to try and add a little bit of fun to the to the title page, just to make it look a little bit more professional. I'm not going to focus on, on, on how to add the, the character to the title page. I've done that with a motion path. And if you want to know how to do motion path, I'll stick that in another video and I will link it to this one. And there should be a link pretty much near the top of the page for that one. Um, in the meantime, though, if I just press space to start, you'll see what happens. The game launches just like that. So what we need to do is have a look at, the, uh, at how the title screen works. I'm going to focus on, on, on a little bit of code that we need to add and we'll get going. OK, so here is my design for the game over screen uh, for the start screen i'm sure you'll come up with something better than that you'll notice the text isn't there uh that's because we've done that using a draw event like we did with the with the score earlier on in the videos uh let's let's look at at, at, at what we do so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go to events and i need to add a title screen event on here to actually write them to write the message that appears so i'm going to put uh Add event and again it's a drawing event so when drawing and I'm going to use a draw text event just like we did before so if I can find there it is draw text just drop drop that into there you should be used to doing this by now I would hope uh, and the text I'm going to add is just a message so I'm just going to do press space start and then I need to work out where that's going to go so again I've already worked out the coordinates the X and Y coordinates for where I want to put this so I know that that should look okay so 225 453 but obviously that's for my game you might want to look at something different for yours um, so that will add the press space to start to the, to my screen but it won't actually detect that the space bar has been pressed I need to do a little bit more coding for that so before we do that um, I'm going to add uh, another key uh, another keyboard key to my list of controls uh, you might remember we did this right back at the start of the game and we were setting up the movement of the player so I'm going to go into settings and I'm in the controls tab already and these are all my control keys so designed to do specific things so I'm going to add a new control here and I'm going to make, I'm going to call this one start and then the key, I'm going to delete the A and I'm going to make it a space to start. Okay, so now that's added to my list of control keys and we'll see why we need that in just a minute. I'm going to add a second event now. But before I do that, as always, I'm going to change the name of my event over here. So, um display start message I'm going to call that and then I'm going to add another event and my next event is going to be uh, and when updating so this is when updating and this time I'm going to need to have um, an if statement in here because what I'm going to do is I need to check to see if the keyboard has been pressed so that's going to be in the flow section and I need if and that's going to go into that bit just there so what I need to do now is figure out how I'm going to get it to detect 
the uh, space bar being pressed. So I'm going to go to the user input section and I've got some keyboard controls there. Notice also that I've got some mouse controls. So if my game had mouse controls, I could start with a mouse click or something like that. But I'm going to go for the keyboard control here. And you'll notice that I've got um, a set of options here that I can have for my keyboard press. So I'm going to drag this one into here and just drag it into the box. And it's a control key. And I need to select it, but I might just have put the wrong one. Let's just try that one. I think it's the top one. And control is down the one. So let's move that in. So double click on there. There we go. And I can choose one of my control keys. So obviously the one that I want is start. So if start was pressed, obviously if they that means if they pressed it and let it go, we want something to happen. And what we want to happen is simply that we go to the next scene in the game. Or we go to the correct scene in the game, which is going to be level 1. So I need to add another block of code uh, for that. And it's just a very straightforward one. It's going to be scenes. And it's... Where is it, where is it going to be? I don't game. I always get... There we go. Switch to scene drag it into here and it's going to be scene level one and decide it's going to be two seconds so if start was pressed switch to level one and again it's going to be renamed check for key press so I'm keeping my good habits of naming all my events and then the last thing I've got to do is if I go back to my dashboard and my scenes I need to make sure that the, 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 that the title screen is selected as my start scene. And the moment, level one will be for you. And if you leave that as your start screen, it won't go to the title screen. It will go straight to level one. So that is now has got a star on the top left-hand corner. So that tells you it's the start scene. So what we're going to do is we're going to pause the uh, video just while I uh, compile the game. And then we'll see if our coding has worked. Okay, so our game is finished compiling, and here it is. You can see I've got the title, the same title page we had before, the text at the bottom. So I'm going to press the space bar. Oops, press the space bar, and it works. So there you go. Um, so that's hopefully pretty straightforward, and it's worth remembering that we've added other screens in this game as well that we could also link to other screens so we could go back to the title page from our game over screen or from our victory screen um, and so it's very easy to make a professional looking game with, with proper title and 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 game over screens so maybe once you've got your basic game working see if you can make it a little bit more professional put a nice front end together and see what you can come up with um, that's all for the moment i'll see you in another video